In this video, I will talk about switching design, specifically layer 2 access design. In the next video, I will be talking about layer 3 or routed access design. Let's start with the layer 2 access design, which can be uh, accomplished with loop free or with the loop topology. What is loop free and looped? Let's start with the loop topology. In this picture, you see that. For the simplicity, let's take left access, left distribution and right distribution. If we have between those three switches, every link is layer 2, so we will have normally layer 2 forwarding loop, but we will use spanning tree and spanning tree will kick in. We, it will say one of the link needs to be blocked. Assume we have left distribution switch is spanning tree root switch, so from left access to right distribution switch link will be blocked. Okay, since there is one block link, if left access to left distribution or left distribution switch link switch goes down, the link between left access to left distribution link or left distribution switch goes down then the convergence needs to happen from left access to right distribution switch go from for uh, blocking to forwarding modes so spanning tree in general converge slow of course we talked uh, in the first video spanning tree modes CST uh, common spanning tree like a spanning tree rapid spanning tree MST and we said uh, rapid spanning tree and MST converge uh, much faster than uh, common spanning tree okay uh, but still it's slower than layer 3 convergence definitely we need to know uh, if we need to rely spanning tree convergence it is generally a bad idea Okay, let's talk about a loop-free topology. Now, just we change the link between the distribution switches. It was layer 2 before. Now, if I place a layer 3 link between the distribution switches, then there will not be any uh, blocked link from left access to both distribution switch links will be forwarding. They will be up. Okay, is there a spinning tree? Yes, there is a spinning tree still. Okay, uh, and we assume left distribution switch is spinning tree root switch. And you can uh, also define right distribution switch is your secondary root switch. But why there is no spinning tree blocked, any uh, blocked link? Yes, just think about it. Since spinning tree is a control plane protocol. It, it will be used for the topology calculation, not for the forwarding the traffic. It will, it will see that there is no actually layer 2 forwarding loop between them. Since for the loop-free topology, we have a layer 3 link between the distribution switches. That's why from the left access to both distribution switch links will be forwarding, will be up. There is no blocked. Okay, if there is no blocked and if the left access to left distribution switch link goes down or left, left distribution switch goes down, okay, still I am forwarding from left access to right distribution. I will continue to do that. There will not be uh, failed over, not, there will not be convergence. Actually, will be, but not for the spinning tree. It will be for the first of redundancy protocol. If left switch goes down, so if I am using HSRP, let's say, HSRP active will be carried to right distribution switch. But as we said before, first of redundancy protocol convergence can be tuned to be faster than spanning tree. Okay? Yes, uh, you need to detect the failure fast. Maybe you, you may want to use fast hello, fast HSRP hello, tune to timer, but I don't recommend in general. Whenever you can use BFT, use BFT, bidirectional forwarding detection. It can give you subsequent convergence, at least a subsequent fast failure detection, let's say. Convergence will be dependent on many other attributes as well. Uh, let's talk about this later on. 
Okay, uh, we talked looped and loop-free topology and convergence point of view and where the uh, how the convergence will be for the loop topology we said spanning tree will kick in for the loop-free uh, first of redundancy protocol needs to be converged to another uh, device. Uh, both both topology uh, gives us one benefit if it's really benefit, which is if we want to spend a VLAN on many access switches, we can do this operation with the layer 2 access design. In the next video, I will talk about route access or layer 3 access design, which we will see that we cannot do this operation. If we can, but it's really challenging and you need to really... Uh, do something and it, it will be it will be a, a bad design you will see why but the problem with layer 3 you cannot easily do that or you can do but you shouldn't you will see that okay with the layer 2 it is uh, it's giving us this capability if I have a wireless VLAN, in general, in real life, you see that you want to spend that wireless VLAN uh, for roaming purpose to not to go to layer 3 roaming. So that wireless VLAN, uh, you may want to uh, spend on many access switches in your campus. So uh, since with this layer 2 access design, uh, we can do this. It, that's why actually this is very common in real life you see this looped topology, looped layer to access most commonly deployed topology. Of course, there is a block link. Since there is a block link for set of VLAN, let's say you have 100 VLAN, okay, what you do in general, which uh, we called odd e even VLAN separation, odd even VLAN separation, uh, for the VLAN 13579, you use left distribution as spanning tree root and also at the same time first stop redundancy protocol active hsrp active for example that device for the even vlan two four six eight ten right distribution switch is for spanning tree root and hsrp active uh, for the secondary root and the uh, standby hsrp the other switch will be uh, waiting for the first primary switch to fail. Okay, in this video, I'll talk about uh, layer 2 access design, which uh, the, the links between the layer 2 to the layer 3 was the layer uh, layer 2, okay, it's, it was a trunk in general. And for the loop-free topology, we said a link between the distribution is layer 3, so on and so forth. In the next video, I'll talk about a layer 3 routed access design, and thanks for watching me.